Hmm. All right. Looks like it's recording. So, why, hello, Liz. Uh, Hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. Uh, just uh, let all the viewers know this is Liz. She is uh, an upcoming pastor. She works at an awesome church. Do you want to tell uh, tell a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm currently studying to be a pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I'm in my final year of seminary school. Um, I've been pursuing this career for most of my life. Um, currently, I am a director of youth formation at St. Paul and the Redeemer Episcopal Church in Hyde Park um, in Chicago. I love my job. Even amidst right now with the chaos, I can still communicate with my youth due to the beauty of video chat. So, so as you know, uh, the um, the blog that we do is uh, it's a blog that I do is actually um, audio visual. And uh, since you are in the um, religious side of the world, how is um, what are some things in uh, your industry that you rely on when it comes down to uh, audio visual? So it depends on the congregation, but a lot of the time. Most congregations will at least have um, some sort of audio setup of um, usually a mic at the altar, a mic uh, at the pulpit for sermons and for readings, um, and maybe some mics for a choir if um, you happen to have the ability to do that. Sure. Um, most of the time, it's just to make sure that people can hear. Other churches will actually have systems in place uh, for people who are hard of hearing. Um, so they'll hearing also assist. set things up. Yep. Hearing, hearing assist. assist. And yep. because um, not all churches, but a lot of churches have older members and a lot of older people end up losing their hearing later in life. Um, sure. And also for those who uh, to have the service accessible for everyone, we try and have uh, the hearing assistance. Um, more churches recently have been moving to having um, personal mics or lapel mics. You can correct me on sure, any sort sure. of yeah, yeah, no, uh, that, that's right, that's right. Actually, it's 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 totally fine. I uh, I, I was working uh, in a setting at one point, and um, I had someone ask me, uh, "Can you put one of those transducers in?" And I'm like. Um, one of those transducers. Okay, um, sure. I'll put one of those babies in. Uh, I had to try to correct them, but they were like, oh, I thought it was one of those transducers. I'm like, transmitters. Yes, yeah, so we can put one of those transmitters in. So th there's always there's always education, you know, especially when mm -hmm. I'm in going to a job site and have to put a system in. So, so uh, as you were saying, uh, yeah, so I know currently the church I work at, uh, when they do have in-person services, um, at the moment they have three lapel mics that they have uh, the leaders use, the sure. priest, the associate priest, and the deacon sure. um, will all have their own mics for the sake of uh, being heard throughout the space. We have four speakers that are centralized in the location of the sanctuary. Uh, though right now we're looking at actually possibly relocating them because all of the sounds going towards the center and we want to fix that. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of churches who will normally at least have one or two microphones. Um, other churches, however, uh, a lot of the more uh, mainstream churches who have kind of come into being in the modern age will have sure. Uh, projector screens and multiple microphones and bands and there are so many different things that audio is used for in church spaces yeah and uh, all the absolutely. spaces are very some are very rigid with pews and there's only one way to set them up others are very adaptable you can move things around yeah there's uh i know um a couple people that uh, are doing actually uh audio visual in a church setting i i, I did that um a little bit a couple years back but I know one piece of equipment that I think is in the grasp of uh, churches is this piece uh, it's a company called black magic and um, it's pretty much an interface that uh, works with um, takes essentially a regular video camera and makes it into like a web a webcam for you know so you can get higher quality and that's something I think that uh, churches can definitely utilize, especially when it's under a thousand dollar price point. Um, it makes it very, 
irresistible, especially in these times, possibly. One thing I've also noticed when it comes to a lot of church audio related systems is they have the systems, but they almost never have anyone who knows how to use them properly. Um, I know like currently at the church I'm at, uh, we have a main power system that everything should be plugged into, but nothing is plugged into it. You just turn it on and off. It does nothing. So we're working on re putting things back together. Cause whoever put it back together in the first place must've done something wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's one of those things where you'll get, you'll get contractors that maybe they just don't have, uh, maybe there's just, they set a price point, realize they, um, they didn't want to do anything about it. And then they figured, well, no one's going to know. And, you know, they'll put notes and stuff on equipment and say, oh yeah, you don't need to turn that off anymore, which brings to us, you know, a point. Um, I know there there's churches and different, even venues where they don't shut off equipment, which can be very, um, it, it can be very pricey uh, when you start thinking about keeping equipment on for days and months on end. But that is something where it's an education thing when, when an engineer, an audio engineer, a production engineer, or uh, just an engineer of any sort comes into a space or, or a contractor they, that is knowledgeable, they should be educating. And that's, that's one thing why, you know, I'd like to talk to different industries to try to educate, you know, you know different people about and, and actually talk to, you know, professionals in the industry and try to tell them about different things that they should watch out for, you know, um, and uh, it's, it's just one of those things where it's an education thing. And um, that is, that's the biggest part of it. Um, but everyone, it's a learning curve, you know, it's a learning curve for sure. Um, I know a big thing I have noticed in the industry that has kind of been detrimental and kind of has been kind of, harsh on your guys industry is um the fcc repack and they've done a couple of those yeah um you know you are aware of what the repack is and and if viewers don't know the re the fcc repack is pretty much um rearranging all the frequencies um so if you're listening to the radio and you see you know 90.1 or something that's literally the megahertz um or the uh kilohertz that is being processed and they actually sends the music through that particular signal. Um, and when they do a major repack, um, they essentially remove certain frequencies from, I guess, from the game. And we are slowly being choked, um, especially with venues that don't have the, like, the kind of money to put in, you know, 30 grand, 40 grand into something. Um, if it's even if it's two or three mics that that could be five grand for a church just to put new microphones in um, at the minimum and then mm -hmm. we you could even go you can go cheaper but the problem is some of those cheaper systems you'll get a couple of years out of them and it's a junk garbage so yeah. quality is important especially in a, a commercial church setting um, I, I, I know uh, that is something you know churches need to look look for you guys need to do the research in uh the fcc warnings you can get fines and that is uh that's a that's a big thing um I, i'm sure i'm sure you've had to deal with some of that before but yeah and i think the thing that's helped us the most is finding good contractors and good people who know what they're doing to give us the correct information. The people who are willing to tell us the truth about what's going on and not just searching for like, oh, how much money can I get out of these people? No, like they care about their jobs, they care about what they do and they care about doing their jobs right. And so having someone come in and be like, oh, this is how you do this because I know that like churches People think the churches have a lot of money, but the truth is they don't. Um, a lot of that money goes towards uh, food pantries or towards the people themselves, towards programming, mm -hmm. towards the pastor's salary. Um, and while there are churches where pastors make 
a lot of money. Most mainline denominations, pastors don't make that much money. They make enough to live off of and to raise a family off of if uh, their denomination allows for families and marriage and stuff like that. But um, a lot of that money goes right back into the church and building that community. And when it comes to finding people you can trust who will tell you the truth about what you need. Um, I know it helps us when we, we had to, um, we were getting feedback a while back in our microphone system and we had to change our frequencies. Um, and that was really helpful to know that rather than just be like, oh, just put up with it. Oh, it's fine. And actually know that we could do this and how to fix it and how to change it. Mm -hmm. So having people you can trust to call on and building those relationships with people, I think has been the biggest help for a lot of churches is to find people who know what they're doing, who respect the space and respect the people there and actually exchange services in a way that isn't money focused, but like sure, best possible outcome focused. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a big thing. I know, um, with, uh, different, you know, wireless equipment, uh, you, like you were saying, it's getting into the system and making sure that you guys can do a repack, uh, your own, I call it a, um, your backup frequencies. And that's something that at some point, um, you guys can actually hook up a system called workbench. It's a free program that sure uses Is that what you guys use is sure. Or you guys use Sennheiser or you guys know a company. I think we use sure. Sure. Um, cause yeah. I think we're looking into getting another microphone actually, because okay. we have more, uh, we've added, uh, two transitional deacons to our staff recently, um, as they search for calls. And so, we're going to have more people involved on Sundays once okay. we end up back in the space. Right now we're mostly online. So okay. I, I know um, originally you were saying that um, you guys at some point, you were talking to me a while back, um, you guys did redo some of your microphones. Do you know if any of those microphones could have frequencies that are good that you can use at the moment? I think they do. I'm pretty sure we had fixed that issue a few months back. Um, that may be an option where you may not have to. Um, there could be possible frequencies. You just got to look up. There's a thing called a Sure Frequency Finder. Um, so if you ever want to check it out, you know, anybody who wants to check it out, um, an easy way to do that is actually take one of those receivers, plug it in, um, and then um, depending on if it has a network, uh, you can actually plug it directly into a laptop and actually set it up into Workbench. Uh, it's very simple. You know, I, I'd be happy to show you how to do it. Um, and then actually create backup frequencies and actually find frequencies that are bad in your area and actually create a backup chart of all frequencies that you can use. Um, mm -hmm. so if it's something that you'd like, you know, we, we, you know, I could show you definitely how to do that at some point. Um, and it's a huge, huge saver, especially when we're like, oh, we're getting bad frequencies. Oh, hey, someone jump over there and grab the backup frequency chart. Okay, this one has been, we checked it six months ago and these are available frequencies. Boom, 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 pop it in. And it's a quick thing you can do. So, yeah, and I think that's really helpful to have is to have that backup and have that knowledge. And I think um, a lot of the time, people who run churches aren't necessarily audio engineers, you know, like they can, figure things out as they go because we have to be jacks of all trades. But at the same time, the best thing to do in any situation is call an expert. And so uh, whether it's a friend or somebody in a, who's a local who is yeah. in that industry and you could call them and be like, what do we need to do to have the best quality sound and um, ability for everyone in this congregation to have the best possible experience? Um, and a lot of, uh, mainline churches, especially large, um, sanctuaries tend to also be homes to a lot of concerts with like choirs and stuff sure. like that. So, yeah, that sounds, yeah. so how does the, how do we best, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, best help those people get the equipment that they need. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that. and that's, and that's, I think uh, one of those very important elements. I know you'll, you'll get, um, I know like when I've 
gone into church or different churches and um, you get a lot of people that want to help that oh like hey well my cousin's an audio engineer but hey i know how to do it but they don't i'm sure you I'm sure that's something you get all the time. Like, oh, well, he says he knows what he's doing. Then realize, oh, he just blew out the two speakers in my in my church. Well, that's going to cost us like four grand. Yeah. I, I get yeah. it. I get it. That's, um, you know, that's, that's rough. You, you definitely, uh, I was doing a job um, many years ago, like 10 years ago. And uh, I had, uh, I was recording a, a junior high and uh, a father came up to me and was like, oh yeah, my brother, he does this for a living. Hey, let me help you uh, roll up all the cables, uh, you know, for uh, my XLR cables. And and uh, I'm like, oh no, sir, sir, it's okay. And he's like doing the whoop, whoop, and he's not doing the over under. And I'm like, oh my God, you're ruining my cable. I was trying to be like really nice. Like, oh sir, please set that down. Put it on the ground right now. <laughs> like, Yeah. So, but, uh, no, Liz, um, uh, it's, it's been nice talking to you. Um, you know, we definitely need to do this again. Uh, you know, if you, uh, see something, uh, hear something that, uh, that you're interested in knowing, um, let me know, uh, give me a call. Um, and we can definitely, uh, try to help you out with it. Um, and just to let you know, all viewers that, uh, um, I'm Michael and, uh, this is Liz and, uh, uh, please go to the mix is almost perfect.com. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I have the Facebook at this moment and um, the mix is almost perfect.com is where you can find everything and a little extra. Uh, you'll see every day. I try to do a video um, and uh, thank you guys for listening. Thanks for having me. Thank you.